welcome back to the channel i just want to do a little uh solar update for you right now it's not going super well but i'll get into that Let me shut this down now i'm actually really liking that generator um all things considered um the only issue i've had and i'll get into it a little bit more is Basically what I have this cable run into, which is supposed to go to the charge inverter. Because this generator is a GFI, they don't like, because that's grounded and the inverter is grounded, and they don't like, you know, you can't have it in multiple spots uh, or else the GFI will trip. And I've gone through three GFIs that took completely fried them because they basically they tripped once and then it got freaked out and it would not come back alive. You reset it and it would trip itself without anything plugged into it in about three seconds it would pop and it would never stay alive again. Um, now, in theory, I watched a couple videos. They say if you unbond the neutral, that should get rid of that problem. It didn't work for me and I am not electrically inclined enough. Um, that's as far as I went. So. I just brought my battery charger, and this one I actually really like. I just bought this one because this one does 20 amps. This one only does 16. I was like, oh, 20 amps is, is significantly more, actually, if you're thinking about it. A 4 amp difference is, is noticeable. Um, I feel like this one was like 80 bucks or something. I think I bought it on sale, and this one was also on sale. It was like 120 and they make a lot of different versions of this one, but I bought this one because it also has a start feature, um, which the rest of these, like in this class of charger from Napa, does not have. Um, there is other ones that'll do, this one only does 12 volt, um, but it'll do 20 amps. They have other ones that'll do like 48 and 6 volt stuff and 24 volt stuff, but it will not have the starter, and I thought that was a good option to have just in case, you know, one of my various piles doesn't want to start. Um, I always thought that was a, that was a good backup to have for when something else is dead. That's why I bought this one. And everything I do is 12 volt. So that made sense to me. However, and this wasn't meant to be a charger video, but this charger is absolute piece of shit compared to this one. And let me tell you why. This charger, even though it's only 16 amps, it will charge up to like 14.6 or 14.7, whatever it'll end up going to, before it deems the battery fully charged. So this thing will charge forever, really. And that's why I like it. Because uh, I can get a, a truly fully charged before this thing shuts off. And this thing will never shut off. I don't know if it's just the duty cycle is so much higher or what, what, what have you. I need to look in the book about this one because this charger shuts off every like 20 minutes. It'll just, it'll just shut off. It'll stop charging. I have to come out here and turn back on, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's super annoying once you get doing something and you realize your batteries aren't charging. And that's not very cool, but it does 20 amps, so that's why I bought it. Um, but this one also, it deems the battery fully charged at like 13.1 instead of the 14.6 that this guy does. So this one really is... It's tuned into more like how this uh, Renogy Rover works, where it deems the battery dead at like 10, and then it deems it charged at about 13.1. And actually, it deems it dead more at like 11. Like 11, pretty much 11. Once it, once it gets into the 10s, it says, uh, it says it's dead, and the inverter starts beeping and nothing's working at that. Um, you have to charge the batteries up. Now... What I didn't realize, I don't know how long it's been going. It's at most only been a day. But basically my, my fuse here, there's a little hairline split in it. As you can see, the battery's blinking with no bars in it, which means it thinks the batteries are dead. It's giving me a low voltage warning, even though these things, it's still reading 11.8 because it's back feeding to the power, but the panels aren't going any power because this gives you the diagram to what it's going to do. It gives you the panels, the battery to light bulb, and the light bulb is basically just load. And it's not making to batteries because that fuse is blown, so I'm not getting a positive current to my batteries. Now, everything went pretty good for the first couple months, until about a month ago now. We've had a really rainy June, and we had about a week and a half straight of, of rain, 
And if it wasn't raining, it wasn't sunny, and it wasn't sunny at all. And now this thing will charge in the clouds, but just not not very well. But it will still charge. However, with and all I have inside going is uh, Starlink and the fridge. And for that at that point, it was just the fridge. And it these two batteries went about um, I don't know about a week straight with very minimal charge during the day and without without dying. They used to stay up around 100 and go down to maybe 90, maybe like 83%. This thing likes 83%, like with some weird numbers. And at most in a day. And then it would charge back up during during the day because it just wasn't that dead and it was good. However, since these things, they went down to, to technically zero, which is just basically breaking in 10 volts, which isn't a big deal for these batteries because you can drain their deep cycles. You can drain these things technically to dead. And then bring it back up. That's that's the point of buying a deep cycle battery. But since they've reached down the 10 and back, this I don't know what's wrong, whether it's the batteries or whether it's the system, but things have not been the same. I mean, these will get up to like 70 and then 70% that is, and then immediately drop down to like 30%. Like they just they just instantly die. So this one's brand new as of last weekend. Um, but it has not remedied the issue. I was hoping it would at least stabilize it. I need to buy probably a fourth one today, and we'll see how that that goes. I'm hoping they have one in stock. I should have ordered one, and if they don't, I gotta order one. Because um, I'd like to. I think I can max this thing out. At least two more batteries, and because these batteries are nice, lithium's better. I know the whole the whole solar argument there. I get that lithium is better, but with with the price of these, they're just right for me right now. At some point, I'd like to upgrade. Um, but that, that's neither here nor there. Um, so, I don't know. The solar was going really well for about, for a little bit. And now it's just, it's been frustrating the last, basically this last month. Um, the inverter's great. Besides the fact that I can't actually charge anything right now. Which, probably to someone who knows electrical better, can figure that one out. Um, I'm not there yet. I just, I haven't had the time to really mess with it either. And... Yeah, so let's jump on the roof. I'll show you these panels. So these are my four panels, and there's my clusterfuck of wires. Now, as you can see, I've been holding this fuse because um, when I got this kit, I got the instructions for the rover and the instructions for the inverter, but not the panels. So I kind of just threw them together with how I thought. And I have all these in, what would you call this? in parallel I believe anyway I forget it's either parallel or series which doesn't help the viewers here but um, I have all the positives going to the positive and all the negatives going to the negative now what what you can do in this thing supposed to sit on the positive side but what I just learned a few minutes ago by looking at the Renergy website is that when, when they send you these with this kit, this is a 400 watt kit, um, they send you a 10 amp fuse in this, which works if you wire them in series, which is when they all hook together and then one positive from one end and one negative from the other end will go and tie together and that's how they get the, all their power. So they'll all get tie, tied together instead of all into into a junction like I have here. When you wire them to a junction like this, they need a 30 amp fuse. Is that 30 or 40? I think it's 30. You need a 30 amp inline fuse, and I kept popping this. I didn't know why. So it ended up getting removed for a little bit because I just kept going through fuses and being out here in the sticks. I just, look at those little guys. I just didn't have the ability to just run the town and get more fuses. And I only bought a pack of like six or something. But now I understand why I'm reading that, of why this kept popping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo this into, I don't know, series or parallel or whatever. I knew this about five minutes ago, and now I forget. Um, so that I can run this 10 amp without blowing it and without causing a safety risk to the rest of my solar. But besides that, the panels are working good. And for the two batteries, these four panels were more than enough. Everything was adequate until the batteries went down to that 10 volt area and things just haven't been the same since and but if you're if you're looking to get solar and you're only going to run a couple batteries 
then these four panel kit is all you need. The whole thing when I was when I was looking up solar before is like, oh, you need like a whole array of panels. You need like a thousand panels to power some batteries, which is not true because the panels just charge the batteries. So once you understand that, you can kind of figure out how many panels you need to adequately charge your batteries based on the load to your house. So these ones will do like, I think like three and a half kilowatts of power on like a five hour average of sunlight, which to me is... This should be more than enough. I think I have an issue down there with the setup more than anything right now. Especially with that fuse blown. But um, I think I think my problem is down there, which is why I'm draining batteries so quickly. And why I'm not getting the amp hours out of battery. But right now I have 300 amp hours of battery. And I can, and they'll, they'll go down in a few hours. Like you can visibly see the charge leave. So I think I got an issue down there. Panel wise, four panels is plenty for me right now. Now, at some point, maybe when I enter, um, now it's been a super, super springy summer so far when I'm only getting clouds and rain, sort of like today. But I didn't think I need more panels until maybe like November because November is super gray around here. We get almost no sunlight in November. So I thought everything would be fine till then. And then I was going to maybe buy another four, four watt kit, 400 watt kit rather, or an 800 watt kit or something. To kind of supplement the power for the winter time, but for the summer, these four panels should be so much, so, so adequate for what I have and for what I'm using, but they're just not. And it's, I don't think it's the panel's fault. Uh, so far, I like the kit. I just got to figure out the battery situation, but that's going to be it for me. If you have any tips, I'm a very beginner solar guy. I really don't know that much what I'm doing. I know the basics, but... I just got to redo these so I can run the 10 and we'll be good to go. But if you have any anything to add in the comments, let me know. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to learn a little bit more. And um, tell me what you think about the batteries because I brought the battery in. The Napa guys told me that you, now I bring a lot of batteries back with the trucks and everything because I'm always frying them. And really, I can only usually get like a year and a half out of battery before I have a dead cell. And that mostly just comes around the winter time. Winter's hard on batteries around here. But those batteries checked out. They didn't have a bad cell. They just need to be recharged, and I get that. So the batteries should be fine. I don't understand why I'm having this issue, and I'm kind of thinking it's not the batteries themselves. I'm kind of thinking it's something else, maybe even the controller. I don't really know. So if you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions let me know i can make up shorts to follow up i can make a whole video to follow up kind of clarify some things but thanks for watching